Happy Sunday, church family. We love you so much. Hey, I want to say a huge welcome to our Antigua, Guatemala family, along with everyone in Dallas. We're so glad you're with us today. But I also want to say welcome to all of those friends and family members of ours who are in other communities around the nation and world. Uh, maybe your church is not able to live stream or put a message together, and you're joining us today. Just want you to know you're welcome, and we love you so much. You're a part of our heart and we're a part of yours. We're all a part of one big church family. That's the global church. And I'm glad we get to be together today. Just do me a favor. Pray for your pastor. And after all of this stuff is done with COVID-19, get back in your church and make it the best it can possibly be. Keep pushing that vision forward and helping your leadership team make it on earth as it is in heaven, whatever community you may find yourself in. Uh, but today we're going to jump into this Bible once again. I'm excited about it. If you have your Bibles, why don't you turn with me to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. I'm not going to talk your ear off today. You know, last week we did this borrow breath message. I probably preached, I don't know, almost felt like an hour. Uh, T.D. Jakes did and just kind of kept going. And But T.D. Jakes is the only one that can preach uh, for an hour. Uh, so this week I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this message a little bit short and hopefully everyone can be engaged with us the entire time. Mark chapter 4, verse number 39, 35, it says, That day... When evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There was also other boats with him. A furious squall, you don't hear that word very often, but a furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified, rightfully so, and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. The title of today's message is Comfortable in Chaos. Comfortable in Chaos. I, uh, I don't know about you, but these times can feel a little bit chaotic. Uh, maybe all of us aren't sure which way is up and what's happening and what's gonna, what, how the news is going to change from one day to another. Uh, but regardless, I think we can be comfortable in the chaos. Uh, moms of toddlers, you know this. Dads of toddlers, you know this. It, it can be chaotic, especially when all the kids are home from school and we're trying to figure out what to do. I've played Twister enough. i am played Catan. I've done Connect Four. We've done Hide and Go Seek. We've painted. We've colored nails. We've done everything we possibly can. I, I need to get comfortable in this chaos, in this passage of scripture here, Jesus and his disciples are on their way to the other side of this sea. And they're, they're, they're walking, not, not walking, but they're in this boat. And I, I want you to see first and foremost that the Bible says they leave the crowd behind. They leave the crowd behind. There's a, a crowd of noise going on in our world right now. I mean, people are saying a lot of things and talking about a lot of different things, and maybe you're following the stock, stock market, or maybe uh, you work in the restaurant business, or maybe you're in some rural community and just things are drying up because the supply chain has been impacted tremendously, and, and now you got a lot of crowd noise. You're, you're going to the store, and you're, you're there, and people you're hearing people whisper different things, or, or you're talking with family members, and they're saying uh, something, or you're, you're, talk, you're, you're on Instagram. Or, or you're on Facebook and there's going to be so much noise and the crowd is saying a lot of things today. And when you listen to the crowd, usually they're not speaking words of hope. Remember, it was the crowd that shouted, crucify him. It, it, when, when you follow the crowd, you end up usually on the wrong side of things, especially when it comes to the language, uh, especially when it comes to words of faith and words of encouragement and words of hope. The crowd tends to be pessimistic. The crowd tends to pull people down. The crowd tends to be opposite of what God is saying in any given time. 
to the disciples here in Jesus, they have to leave the crowd. We, we try to train our kids this way. There will be some times that all of your friends are going to do something and you ought not do it. There'll be some times you're in college and all of your frat brothers are going to do this thing and you probably should not take that step. We're trying to tell a business leaders that, hey, if everyone in your circle is not being ethical, that, that doesn't mean you ought to cut corners as well. You ought to go ahead and do the, the hard thing, the character thing, even when everybody else may be cutting corners. Sometimes the crowd is the one that's trying to pull you the wrong direction. The disciples here said, hey, we're going to have to be willing to leave the crowd. You're going to have to be willing, friends, to, to cut off the TV or, or get off, put, you, put down your phone for a second and say, Jesus, I, I want to go with you. I want to walk with you. I want to follow you. I want to I get in the boat where you're headed. I want to go to the other side with you because all these people, they're screaming that we're not going to make it, but you just said we're going to go to the other side. So what I want to do is I want to align my heart and I want to align my mind. I want to align my words. I want to align my life. I want to align my family with what you said. And since you said we're going to the other side, then we're going to the other side. And I'm willing to leave the crowd behind. So leave the crowd behind, and I, I like this here, this, this furious squall, a furious squall, a, a mad storm. It, it comes out of nowhere. Now, in this, this, this sea of, of Galilee, th there would be storms that would happen suddenly all the time. And they, they happened suddenly because over the eastern mountains, the wind would come and this hot air combines with the cold air. So, so all the time, storms would just come out of, out of nowhere. Do you, do you feel like that's what's happening in our day today? It's like, this. what in the world? I thought I could go where I wanted to go, when I wanted to go there, travel how I wanted to travel, talk to who I wanted to talk with, and now I'm elbow bumping and foot kicking and avoiding people and coughing in my arm. And if I see, I saw a person cough the other day. They were 45 feet from me. I still ran. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm just trying to do my part to flatten that curve and, and make sure I'm not adding to the, the drama and the issues that are going on in our world right now. But this storm seems like it came out of nowhere. But it's not just this COVID-19 storm. Others of us are walking through other storms, and it, it just came out of nowhere. Went in for a routine doctor's appointment. Boom, storm. I, I didn't know I was going to come home one day, and my spouse would say they weren't in love with me anymore. Boom, storm. I didn't know my, my kids or my best friend was dealing with what they're dealing with. And, and I've known them all this time. They haven't shared with me what they're walking through. J boom, storm out of nowhere. And here the disciples find themselves in a storm and it comes out of nowhere. But go with me to verse 38. I, I, I want you to see the question that they ask them. The, the storm is raging. And the disciples run to Jesus. They wake him up. Teacher, don't you care if we drown? D don't you care? Do I even matter to you, Jesus? D does my family matter to you, Jesus? The, the storm going on, it, it makes them question the character of Jesus. I, I feel like this question is being asked today as well. I feel, I feel like people are like, hey, don't, don't you care if I drown? Don't you care that I got this business off of the ground and we're only two years in and I cannot afford for my business to be shut down? This restaurant is brand new. I can't afford for this to happen right now. Don't you care about my employees? Don't you care about my family? Don't you care that I'm trying to put my kid through school? Don't you care that I'm trying to do this Dave Ramsey thing and I'm only I'm only $1,000 in my emergency fund and that thing is down to $78. Don't you care? Don't you care? I feel like people can be looking at God in these times and saying, don't you care? Do, do, you, do, you, do I even matter to you? Does my community matter to you? 
But, but understand, people have been asking this question, not just in America, they're asking it all over the world, and not just with COVID-19. There's individuals that are, that are trapped in sex trafficking right now, and, and just as an aside, we're still sending money to help end that, even in the midst of all of this that's going on. So we've got to make sure we keep continuing to be generous, because we're not, there's a lot of nonprofits that are, that are tr- holding on and, and asking us to continue to be involved in their lives as well, because we have girls right now that are in some brothel somewhere that are asking themselves the question, do you even care if I drown? Do you care? Disciples, I just see them they're running around frantic. They're running around frantic. They're on, they're on the boat. The water's coming everywhere. And I don't know if you've ever been on a boat in a crazy storm. It is a terrible feeling. That boat is just, I mean, you're not controlling anything at all. And this is what's happening to the disciples, and this is what's happening in a lot of our lives right now. There are things being opposed, imposed on us that we don't control at all. Do you even care? Do you see they asked this question in the storm? They did not ask this question before the storm. Before the storm, Jesus is like, let's get in the boat. They're like, yeah, let's get in the boat. All right, we're in the boat, let's go. But once the storm happens, that's when the questions come. You probably heard this uh, before, and I read it somewhere, but don't doubt in the dark what God told you in the light. Uh, he said when, when it was sun shining, when the sun was shining and everything was bright and everything was beautiful, evening was just coming and, 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 the, and the, 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 the sea was clear and, and they were re- it was pristine and it was like the condition seemed perfect and Jesus like, go to the other side. They didn't go, hey, why? Do you think we should? What do you think is going on? They just like, okay, let's go. Let's jump into this boat. Let's go to the other side. But as soon as the storm came, the question. What's your character, Jesus? Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The storm, they thought, was an indictment on Jesus' character. It was not an indictment on his character. He was sleeping. The storm was actually the thing God used to reveal their character. Like, what do, what do they believe about God? What do they think about God's goodness? What do they think about God's power? They're looking at the storm and thinking it's an indictment on God, and God's like, no, no, I just use it as a test to see really what's going on on the inside of you. Because here's Jesus. He is asleep on a cushion. What a random detail. The, the Bible is, is fascinating. He's asleep in the stern of the boat on a cushion. It didn't tell us if it was, you know, it was knit with a little cat on it or if his grandmother put it together or if it was filled with wool. I guess the cushion would have been filled with wool. There were a lot of sheep that day. I don't know. But here we have this detail that Jesus is asleep on a, on a cushion. And when I saw that, I honestly was very, really, really challenged personally uh, because in times of storms, we all rest our heads somewhere. And I was challenged because I'm asking myself the question, where am I resting my head during this time? Okay, can I be honest for just a second? Well, I'm always honest, but let me go ahead and continue to be honest. Uh, just yesterday, spending some time in prayer and, you know, we're trying to lead the church as best we can and the beautiful community that's, that's gathered around TVs and phones right now and on YouTube or Facebook or wherever you might be watching this on our website. And, and uh, I, I've, got, I've got a team of people that, that God has put in my care. I've got a family that I've been, have, have the honor to serve and love and lead. And, 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 and with everything going on in this time, I have felt the pressure to be perfect. Just to be perfect. I want to say everything perfect. I want to do a perfect sermon. I want to, I want to give perfect leadership. 
I want to make perfect decisions. I want everything to be perfect. Now, I did not, in my head, I didn't say this explicitly, uh, but, but I realized last night in my time of prayer, when I was like, God, just clean up my heart. What, what's wrong? Am I, am I pointing at the right direction? Is it, do I need to cry at all? You know, you know when you're trying to cry, like... No, there's nothing in there. Okay, okay, good. But, but I, I'm, I'm trying to feel what I need to feel, experience what I need to experience. I, I don't want to be, I don't want to end up broken down on the side of the road. I want a soul that's, that's alive and pure and, and clean. And as I was praying, I felt like God saying, you're trying to be perfect. And perfection is not your aim in this. Love is your aim. Love well. Love your family well. Love your 15-year-old and your almost 10-year-old and your almost 5-year-old. And love, love your wife who's a, a finey fine-year-old. Uh, that's fine. I, that, that's what she is. L love your team. L love your church. So today I'm not trying to do a perfect sermon. I'm just trying to, trying to love you well. I'm trying to remind you of God's love for you. That he's on your side and he has not forgotten about you. And you and I can feel like he has in storms, just like the disciples that they felt like he, well, he had forgotten about them, like he didn't care about them. But the reality was Jesus is sleep on this cushion. And I decided in this season, I'm not trying to sleep on the cushion of perfection. I want to sleep on the cushion of his grace and his power and his love. That's what I want to sleep on during this time. What are you sleeping on? Bars are closed. So what are you sleeping on? There's stuff that's available. There's websites that are still available. What are you sleeping on during this time? Did you used to have an anger problem and you're choosing to go back to that because you can't control things? What are you sleeping on right now? And here's, here's the time that we see Jesus asleep on the cushion, and I just think it might be a reminder for us to make sure we're sleeping on the right thing during this time right here. Here are the disciples. They have a temper tantrum. Okay, they are going crazy. Jesus! Jesus! What in the world? Stop! This is a problem. I don't like this. And I get that. I get it. Now, we have a... Mm, let me not sp speak about any of my children specifically. Those of you who are parents know about temper tantrums, okay? You know about these things. And they happen like storms at the worst possible time. You can be in the grocery store and you see the box of, I don't know, Fruit Loops, Lucky Charms. Can I have that, Mommy and Daddy? No, you can't have that. You keep on walking and all you know, before you know it, all hell has broken loose. And this three-year-old is trying to control your life by laying on the floor, kicking and screaming. And now other people are looking at you and they think you've done something wrong to your child. Now, it depends on your skin color how you respond in this moment. White people respond one way, Hispanic people another way, black people, Asian people. You got, got a whole bunch of different groups that will respond different ways. And, and some folks are like, if you don't get your heart, oh, oh, no. You're smiling. <laughs> but your kid knows. Some people have the audacity, like, I'm just going to whoop you behind right here in front of everybody, okay? You can't do that anymore, just so you know, do not do that. So here, here you got this kid laying on the floor throwing a temper tantrum, and I feel like in this passage of Scripture, the disciples are kind of doing the same thing. They're freaking out. And Jesus gives them what they want. He goes, and he quiets the storm. It's right here. He says it. He got up, rebuked the wind, verse 39, and said to the waves, quiet, be Still, then the wind died down and it was completely calm. I was thinking, why would he give them what they asked for when they didn't even ask with faith? Later on, he, said, he asked them a question. They gave him a question. He asked them a question later. Hey, why are you still so afraid? Do you still have no faith? So why would he give them what they want when they did not even ask for it properly. I, I, I think there's a couple of reasons for this, and I'm just about done. Number one, 
I think he quieted the waves and the wind to remind them that he was always in control. He didn't do it because of the temper tantrum. He didn't do it because of their lack of faith. He did it to let them know, I've always been in control. When I was sleeping, I was in control. When everything was going crazy all around, I was in control. When you were doubting whether or not I loved you, I was in control. When you wondered if I was for you, I was in control then. When you thought everything was about to flip over and your life was about to be done, I was in control in that time as well. When you went to the funeral, I was in control. When the business stopped, I was in control. When the economy changed, I was in control. When all hell broke loose in your face, family and in your mind I was in control then and I'm in control right now quiet be still I was in control but not only that I think he answered this prayer to let them know or this temper tantrum rather to say hey it wasn't because of your tantrum that I answered you it was because of my goodness Like there are times, parents, aunts, uncles, you, you give your kids what they want. And sometimes you do it to like, oh, I, I got to shut them up. I got to shut them up. I'm on a plane right now. I got to shut them up. Okay, just give them anything that they want. Yes, there are some times you, you and I do that. But there are some other times you just give them what they want, not because of the tantrum, but just to let them know, I'm good. I got you. And I think Jesus did this. Not to answer the tantrum, but to let them know, I'm good. And if there's anything I can leave you with today, I want you to leave. I want you to leave with, he's good. I want you to leave with, he's for you. I want you to leave with that he's actually on your side. I want you to leave with that he has not forgotten you. And when he answers prayers, it's not because of the tantrum, because you and I might think, I need to continue to do tantrums in order to get him to respond. But he's not responding because of the tantrum. He's responding out of his goodness. He is so for you that he does things for you and I that you and I don't even deserve. That's what the cross is. That's what the empty grave is. It's not because you and I deserve it. It's because he was just and is so good. Can you be comfortable in chaos? Yeah, you can. Can I be comfortable in chaos? Yes, I can. He's in control and he's still good. So I'm going to lay my head on that cushion and I'm going to trust God for his grace and power to sustain us and to lead us. If you wouldn't mind, friends, do me a favor. Bow your heads for just a moment. I ask you to bow your heads just so that you have an opportunity to focus for a second. And maybe your head has been on the wrong cushion for quite some time. And this is a moment for you to surrender your heart and your life to Jesus Christ. For you not to be in control of your life, but for him to be in control of your life. I'm asking today, if you have never given your heart and your life to Jesus, if you've never made him first, if you've never made him number one, If you've never made him the boss of your life, this is the moment where I want you to surrender your heart and your life to him. This is the moment where the grace of God is drawing on your heart saying, son, daughter, it's time to come home. So I'm going to ask everyone to do me a favor. Put your hand over your heart if you would not mind. And if this is you and you know it's time for you to surrender your heart and your life to Christ, I just want you to pray this prayer out loud after me. It's like I'm leading you in vows as you surrender your heart and your life to Jesus Christ. Ready? Here we go, friends. Dear Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I admit I've made mistakes. And today, I give you my heart. I give you my life. Give me the power to live for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, can lift your head up. I want you to know I celebrate you. We all celebrate you.